Hey guys, it's Matt here at Sweat Elite. I'm down at the track and I'm excited to share with you Sweat Elite's new coaching partner, Best Athletics. They're the sponsor of this video and they are, as mentioned, our new training partner. As a treat, I've got the founder of Best Athletics here, Nick Bester, to share with you what Best Athletics is all about. Thanks for joining, Nick. Pleasure. Hey guys, so Best Athletics was founded just over a year ago. There's currently just over 100 uh, runners between the three coaches. Regardless of your location, we can help you improve whether you're chasing a PB or just looking to improve as a runner. We can help you get there. Uh, whether you're an 800 meter runner or a marathoner, even an ultra marathon runner, help us help you be your best at Best Athletics. All right, Tom, thanks for having me out of your workouts. You're only five days after a 63K effort. We'll talk about it in a minute. Yeah. But um, how's things with you at the moment? Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah really, I love being at home, so it's yeah. so nice yeah, to be in here Loughborough. in Loughborough, yeah. uh, in a place called Beacon Hill or Beacon Park. Yeah, um, yeah I think for for me, this is my, this is my bread and butter. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's so nice to be here. And yeah, I've been, as we had looked earlier, I've been, uh, yeah, I've been reading the Sweat Elite stuff since 20, early 2017. So, <laughs> yeah, no, it's super cool that you're here. And, uh, yeah, no, thanks for having me out. No, looking forward to it. Hope you, the, uh, you're back I think in form, which yeah, is awesome. You had yeah, the, get... the win at the Madeira a couple of weeks back. And then, um, yeah, we'll hear a little bit more about that before we talk about the workout. Yeah, so, yeah, it's just been really nice. Sort of, I was pretty badly injured for the, sort of, for the last year or 2021. Yeah. And sort of from, geez, from February until and I had an operation on my knee in August because the rehab worked to a certain extent. I got really strong, but the injury was still there. So it was, yeah, not gonna happen. Um, and yeah, it's just been a really progressive build up back into some sort of shape. And we sort of decided that me and my coach, Scott Johnson, sort of decided, right, what's the point in being able to run a 63 flat half marathon when you want to win 100 mile races and like mountain 100 mile races so there yeah there's no yeah it's great having some speed and some, for some efficiency but yeah for the last like sorry about the brakes no, <laughs> for, the, for the last like uh yeah six months we've just been focusing on climbing and yep. all of our workouts have been about climbing and efficiency and yeah and so yeah a nice a nice result at madeira that's the the slowest average pace race I've ever done. Okay. Which is exactly what I wanted. Right. Because it's all about the efficiency on the uphills, whether that's running or it's hiking. Mm -hmm. It's how do I use the least amount of energy as possible? Um, and then, yeah, be able to open it up a little bit on the flats and the downs, but stay very much within myself. So yeah, you're putting less stress on the body, especially in these sort of B races. It's sort of my main goal this year is UTMB. That's for those who don't know, it's uh, yeah, just over 100 miles with just over 10,000 meters of climbing. Um, and yeah, you'll see today on the video, it's this isn't we're not in the mountains, no. like this is a from the bottom to the top, it's a 125 meter climb. Yeah. So it's not much. We just uh, did it in the warm-up. Just, just done it on the warm-up. And say it's, uh, it's definitely far from flat because uh, I had a little bit of a hard time in some sections <laughs> even going five minute kilometer pace. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, okay. So and yeah, so, so what more specifically is the, is the workout today? So the workout today, we're gonna do three, it's, marathoners would hate it <laughs> because you look at, it's a very like trail running specific, yeah, marathon tempo workout, but marathoners would hate it because you would want to do an exact distance. You see groups going around with a wheel, getting the exact distance right. And this is, and then you tick on to Loughborough and on the Kev Seawood video, we use the 2K loop, yeah. which isn't 2K. Yeah. It is, if you, if you went around with a wheel, it's probably 1,900 and, 90 meters yep. but it's pretty much yeah. whereas this is sort of the other side it's about 4k okay. but it's probably more like 4100 meters yep. um 
with 150 meters of elevation per loop. Yeah, most with, of that in the first half. Most of that on the first half. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, a jog back to the start. Yeah. It might take two minutes, it might take three minutes. Yeah, yeah. It's a, uh, yeah, the, for I me- I now know exactly what you mean by marathons would hate this. It's not very specific. No. As in like terms of paces and no. distances and stuff. Pace, pace goes out the window. Yeah. I have a heart rate target okay. for the uphill. Yep. And a target heart rate for the downhill. Okay. Um, but yeah, like you say, I'm yeah five days post um, <laughs> 63 kilometers. 63 kilometers, which yeah. was yeah running six minute miling for four hours. Yep. Um, was that what, what was that event about? You briefly told me in the so text, but uh, you were chasing a car. A car is chasing you. So it's a called. Okay. Car it's called you. Wings for Life World Run. It's Red yep. Bull's charity, yep. and they are finding a cure for spinal cord injuries okay. um, and so yeah basically everyone starts running and then half an hour later a catcher car starts yeah. and the race stops when it catches you and it speeds up every 15 minutes okay. until when it went past me it was going like 45k an hour um, yeah really cool event and I went to Vienna to do it yeah. um, and the last 30k is on a you're on a on a river path on running alongside the Danube but you're running the other way to the waters going right so it's probably like 0.25 percent incline okay into a headwind yeah. I'm making all the excuses <laughs> uh, but no it, it was great fun it's just a nice tempo and having not done any flat tempos for a year yeah. it's nice to be able to run six minute off no training yeah specific training nice to be able to run six minute miling for four hours yeah yeah for sure miserable but yeah. fun yeah and you pulled up reasonably well it seems i mean yeah you know, we're five days later now you're gonna hit a three by four k tempo so recovered well yeah three by four ish k yeah, four tempo ish k. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. but yeah no recovering well and yeah i think sort of for me i have put it since my injury i've sort of been putting a huge emphasis on the recovery yeah. and yeah not smashing every session and for me doing a session like this it's not 4k am i aiming to run if you were doing a flat tempo and you're aiming to run three minutes a K and you didn't, it would be a bad workout. Whereas today it's windy, it's hilly. If I average four minutes, I average four minutes. If I average 3.30, I average 3.30. Yeah. Like, it doesn't matter, yeah. which is the really nice thing. So I can't, this workout can't go amazingly. It also can't go badly yeah. because sure. a workout's a workout. It's still load going into your body. Sure. And the heart rate goals that you mentioned? Heart rate Are goals, yeah, for the yeah. uphill, I'll sort of be looking somewhere between sort of 162 and 166. Yeah. Uh, and then for the downhills, sort of more like 140. Okay. Um, because it's still, it's a super controlled effort. And I sort of find now that coming from some relative speeds of 63 half, anything, yeah, if I'm six minute miling or a bit quicker, it's not, it doesn't cost that much. Sure. Um, so it's just, it's more about the conditioning and especially now, five days post race, not smashing my legs on the downhills yeah. because what's the point? I've yeah. got, yeah, three months in my next race. So yeah. nice and, and easy, UTMB. which is UTMB. Okay. Um, so yeah, this is sort of a, we'll go into sort of a mini block now that's right. Let's get that a little bit of turnover back, a little bit of efficiency. And then I'll then go out to Chamonix into the mountains and I'll get slow but very efficient at climbing uh, and I'll yeah, solely focus on, on the climbing, which yeah, super exciting. Awesome, last question for you in the warm-up. You're an Adidas uh, athlete. Yeah. What is the shoe of choice for a workout like this on this terrain? It's a very good question, uh, using a prototype. Okay. Um, that are, we doesn't... Allowed, maybe, are we allowed to talk about that? Yeah, we can know about it. Okay. Uh, it is, yeah, I've, I wore it in Madeira. Um, okay. Doesn't have a name yet. Okay. Um, but yeah, it is a, it is trying to find the balance between road running and trail running. The sort of road running technology has gone crazy in the last five years and trail running has sort of kind of stayed more normal, but now you're seeing companies coming out with, trail companies coming out with carbon plate technology and trail running shoes. Mm -hmm. We're sort of playing around with maybe not carbon, but maybe something else. Um, but yeah, for a, a fast trail running shoe, um, that saves your legs. Yeah. Um, 
so yeah, running in that again. Um, I love it. I've worn it quite a lot. Um, yeah, I wore it in Madeira. The guy, uh, Pablo Villa, who's also Adidas Terex, wore it in Trans Gran Canaria and he won there. Mm -hmm. So the only times it's ever been worn in races, it's won. Yeah. Um, good record so far. Yes, it must be good. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is actually the last question. Yeah. What did you warm up in? What is the preference for like an easy run? Or uh, just... I wore today just yeah easy warm up the TWO Parlays. Yep. Um, boost with the heavy, uh, boost material. Um, in the midsole, yep. continental outsole, and then just uh, yeah, a lightweight, not massively supportive, but super comfy upper. Okay. Um, yeah, it's just a it's, yeah, it's probably sort of my go-to, yep. my go-to shoe for easy and for warm-ups. Just especially if I'm a, feeling a bit sorry for myself, I'm a little bit <laughs> yeah. sore still, which is most days. Awesome. Let's get into the workout. Perfect. Okay, so here are the prototypes without a name just yet. Yeah. But um, if you could describe them in maybe 15, 20 seconds as to maybe how they feel any different to say a, uh, I know that Vaporfly is obviously Nike. Uh, I'm mind blanking the Adidas Super Shoe right now. The Prime Next is the illegal one. Yeah. But how yeah. Are they, maybe how do they feel? Adios 2. Yeah, Adios 2, that's uh, I think for me they are, they're a bit wider. Yep. Um, so yeah, a little bit more stable. Um, they've got continental on the bottom, yeah. um, with some good lugs. Yeah, they're just a, and a lighter, a lighter upper. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're just a really good, yeah, they're a really good shoe. Like, and it's, for me, it's just been so fun to, yeah, to be part of this process mm. in developing a shoe that will hopefully help me run as fast as I can but I genuinely believe it will help other people run as quick as, yeah, as quick as they can on the trails. And yeah, trail running isn't necessarily a time goal, but yeah, yeah I think you're, if, this, if it allows people to beat race, to sort of get through checkpoints sort of before, the, before they close and you can actually finish a race, yeah. then yeah, how amazing is that? <laughs> That's great. All right, we're about to get started. First uh, mile here is yeah the the climbing, and then we'll uh, we'll see the downhill after that. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Ready when you are. Cool. Well, I lost you in the first mile, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. I was a bit far behind. <laughs> Catch up on the downhill, how was that? Uh, good start. Yeah, pretty good. Uh, I guess the main question is how the legs after that 63k five days ago. Well, significantly better on the uphill than the downhill. Okay. Uh, which I think is uphill aerobically is harder. Yep. Downhill aerobically it's easy. But muscularly uphill is fairly easy. Whereas downhill is hard. So I think, yeah, aerobically fully recovered. Yep. Muscularly, not a million miles off, um, but that's the nice thing about these sessions because yeah, there's no exact, uh... time doesn't matter. Yep. Like, it really doesn't, if you ran a 4K, if you ran 13 minutes or 17 minutes, or 12 minutes, 
the effort uh, this, matters. It, it doesn't matter because it's so it's so re irrelevant. Whereas if you're running 4K reps at marathon pace and you were even five seconds outside what you wanted to run, <laughs> that can be seen as a a huge disappointment. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it will ruin your day. Whereas for me, this yeah. is a this is great. It yeah. feels. Yeah. Yeah, like feels... you said at the start, there's no uh, there's no real way to have a bad workout. I, no. I mean, unless you just feel horrendous, but it seems yeah. like you're fine. Yeah. 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 Cool. Right. Good luck. Yeah, so far so good. Yeah, good. Yeah. Two done. Yeah. Yeah, feels. The body's a bit tired, but as yeah. kind of to be expected. Yeah. Uh, and I know you did say that the recovery is unplanned, but you're taking very roughly around three to four. Or yeah, three to somewhere between three and four. Just jogging back to the start. Yeah, we started the. That rep was a bit longer. Yeah. The first one was a bit shorter. Yeah. First one was like three. 1,800, that yep. one was like 4,200. Yep. So maybe this one I'll get in 4K. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see, but it's the nice. Yep. Doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. It literally doesn't matter, which is the, yeah, it makes it far yep. less, maybe far less measurable, a little bit less specific, yep. but actually for, for the sake of getting a good workout yep. post race, yep. Wide. It doesn't need to be exact. Yeah, sure. I'm just going to try and figure out this heart rate monitor because it's reading like 190. Oh, okay. I don't think I can get to 190. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You would know if it's 190. Like you'd, you'd, you'd be really struggling. I'd be dead. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There'd be an ambulance coming. Yeah. But we'll see. We'll see. It's all okay. on feel anyway. Number three. Here Number we go. Number three. Final one. Nice one, well done. Yeah, save the best for last. Yeah? Yeah. Now I know that you were not really worried too much about the time, but uh, I mean, how did your laps compare to each other? Not necessarily to a different workout, but. Uh, so, I think the more, the more that I run and the more experience I get, yeah. the slower, and I know the better shape I'm in and the more confident I am with my shape, hmm. the first rep is the slowest. Yep. Um, because I've got, yes, I'm fresh, but I've got nothing to prove to myself. Yep. So it's, yeah, it's 4K, it was just over 4K. Of course, there were different lengths, so that was yeah. a silly question by me. So the, <laughs> the, pace on the, the pace on the first one was the slowest one, yep. um, but only just. Yep. And then second was a little bit quicker, yep. uh, and that was just over 4K in 15 minutes. Yep. Pretty much bang on. Yep. And then the last one, was the same again, a little bit more than 4K, yeah. 
and was 14, 17. Nice. Okay, so, no, quite a bit quicker. Yeah, yeah, quite a bit different. Yeah, when you're running on the flat, it's difficult to make up time. Yep. And it's quite easy to lose time. Yep. Whereas when you're running on mixed terrain, it's as easy to gain time as it is to lose time. Yep. Like you can very easily run a climb. So this is a mile long climb. Yep. Very easy run it 20 seconds quicker, 20 seconds slower. Yep. Especially if you're working at tempo. Sure. Uh, and you're with a heart rate bracket and heart rate got the yeah, heart rate monitor worked on the last one and it was spot on. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think for, for me it's, yeah, workout done. Yep. Did, like none of my, no one would ever look at any of my workouts and think, oh my God, this guy's going to win whatever race. Like, there's no workout that's yep. particularly special. Yes, there are some that I'm proud of, yep. but the majority of my workouts especially sort of this part in the season, in between races and, yeah, race, geez, race five days ago, yeah. is, yeah, there's nothing, there's nothing to write home about. Yeah. It's just a, a solid effort yeah. that builds a lot of consistency. And I've started coaching pretty recently and okay. a lot of people think that you've got to collapse at the end of a session mm. for it to be a good session. Whereas we're now talking three minutes after the last rep. It's like you've just done a warm up. And we've just done a, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it takes time to build yeah. fitness. And if you try and take two steps forward, yeah. you're going to have to take three steps back. Sure, okay. Rather than, yeah, yeah. little steps yeah. all the time. Um, and yeah, now time for a little cool down. And yeah. then, uh, then we're done. Then we're done. Awesome. I've got a question. I'm curious. Uh, we were talking uh, off camera before about marathon training mm -hmm. and long runs. What will your build up in terms of uh, to the, your longest run be towards uh, UTMB? How far would you normally uh, go in training is in your maximum long runs, which I guess will occur in July, yeah. late June? Yeah. yeah, so exactly. Last weekend of June, I'll do 100K. 100, yeah. Uh, that's what I liked. That's what I did before Western States in 2019. I did 100K. I was in Ethiopia. So it was a little bit different. That's right. Were you with one of the Robertson twins? Yeah, I was That's insane. right. I remember that. Uh, and it was class. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it was, I ran 100K all above 2,700 meters. Yeah. I was wrecked for a week and ended up flying back early because I was just broken. <laughs> um, okay. But yeah, I'll do, yeah, I'll do 100K. I guess sort of similar to marathon training, how you would do sort of a 20 miler yep. at marathon pace or broken up into so people like to do it differently but yeah. 20 mile at marathon pace is a very good indication of fitness so it's yeah so kind of similar ratios two thirds yeah. yes in 60k to go but yeah it's i think with these races you can be fit fitness is great yeah being efficient is great having low lactate on climbs is great mm. but a lot of it's up here yeah and you, you could be on paper the physically most talented athlete in the world, but you really struggle in some races, some hard races. This race goes through the night. Yeah. You start at 6 p.m. You run through the whole night on a head torch at altitude. No matter how many long runs you've done before that, those long runs can't prepare you. Yes, they can help make it a little bit easier, but yeah. there's more to it than, than the training, which for me is why I will always prefer the trails for sure over the road because like a session like today it's yeah, great yeah. no stress no pressure I wasn't worried about it going to races I know sometimes I might be on paper physically the fittest but actually a lot of those races that you go in and you think that on paper you look the best you probably end up not winning yeah. and yeah a lot of it's in the mind which for me yeah just gives it that little bit extra and I also I just I love the planning of it as well how do you how do you prepare for a race that starts at 6 p.m mm. like what's your yeah it's super interesting and you look at when in like Doha when the marathon was at night and people were thinking oh what do we do how are we yeah. going to do this and for me it's like I love that challenge I love looking at that those challenges and thinking right what do we do and I, I would love it for me I will never race European cross country again unless they do it at night Okay. And I think a floodlit course 
would just be, it would just add an extra element. And I think it would give that sort of conventional athletics, that old school athletics, that buzz, like Highgate. Yeah. It's making it a little bit different, a little bit more watchable. Yeah. And yeah, a bit more exciting. And for me, that's what trail running is. It's, okay. it's more exciting and yeah, it gives you that, yeah, there's no stress, there's no pressure. And yeah, geez, I'd recommend anyone, yeah. anyone who's thinking about doing it. I get a lot of questions asking like, oh, I'm thinking about doing my first ultra, what should I do? And my answer is always just sign up, yeah. pressure yourself, give yourself that pressure of doing it, yeah, yeah. put a date on it and yeah, go from there. Yeah, excellent. That leads me to one last question because you mentioned that you love a challenge and you love these extra challenge, uh, you know, uh, dynamics to a race. I watched Barclays Marathon recently. Yeah. Are you ever going to attempt that? I'd love to. <laughs> I would absolutely love to. For me, it's that the, looks absolutely brutal. Yeah, it's brutal. It's <laughs> the perfect race. Me coming from a military background, like yeah. I can navigate. I can run. I like you to think I'm sleep deprived. I like to think <laughs> I'm pretty strong up here. Yeah. I think I know how you get a place. I think. Oh, that's right. The entries are really the entries. Yeah. Process. Yeah. It's crazy it's like a dollar 16 you got to write a letter or something yeah on a, <laughs> on a certain day of the year okay you have sent an email on a certain day of the year and okay. I, th I think I'm 75 percent sure I know what okay. it is which probably means I don't okay. but uh I'd love to see you attempt that I'd love to do it yeah give it a couple of years I'd love to do it awesome thanks for having me up, man appreciate awesome. it awesome no Have thanks very much up. see you later